An open letter to my teenage son, the punk. Dear son, you asked my reaction to mohawks and wild haircuts on young people. This proud land was once ruled over by great Indian chieftains who wore mohawks. Sitting Bull, Geronimo, Tecumseh, Montezuma. These noble warriors were brave and dedicated leaders with a special relationship to their homeland. Yet, the annals of history show us that they lost it all to long-haired white men with guns. So I ask you, son, that until you are ready to accept the same responsibilities of these great warriors and get a licensed handgun to defend yourself against a multitude of lowbrow citizens ready to beat you to a pulp for looking the way you choose, then and only then will you have my blessing to wear a mohawk. Son, you ask my opinion of anarchy and destroying the established order. Son, I respect your noble ideas, for a man without politics is like a man without politics. Your beliefs are naive and will do nothing to bring about change. Your shouting of slogans and shocking ideologies will only cause bitter reaction among those in power and cause the police state to clamp down even tighter on the free citizens of this proud land. But remember, son, your actions are not in vain. By proposing noble, radical ideas, you will look good in the eyes of your peers. Young girls will love to put out for a wild-eyed rebel, and God knows that a little sex will do your complexion a lot of good. So your call will not fall on deaf ears. Son, you ask me what you can do to change society. Political and social change is not made with bombs or ballots, but dollars in the marketplace of politics. Go out, son, and get a job. Buy the type of government that you demand. There are plenty of jobs out there in trendy boutiques and restaurants that would love to hire anyone that dresses the way you choose. You ask my opinion of the police force. The law enforcement officers of this proud land are much like you, son, in that they dress in black and wear big shiny leather boots. But have respect for these officers of law and order, because if you don't, they have the power to kill you. Finally, son, you ask me how anyone can have hopes dreams and ambitions when we live in the shadow of a nuclear nightmare. Son, your dear mother and I have been living in that same shadow nearly all our lives. Yet it did not stop us from planning a good life. We didn't throw in the towel just because this proud nation has been run all our lives by a series of immoral, trigger-happy madmen ready to push the button and send all civilization up in smoke in a matter of seconds. This did not stop us from buying a home, a car, a VCR, a personal computer, a timeshare condominium on the Gulf Coast. This did not stop us from raising you and giving you all we had to give. Son, your mother loves you. That's because she is a woman. And son, I love you too. But if you are totally disturbed by the prospects of nuclear devastation in your lifetime, then visit a licensed physician that will prescribe a multitude of drugs that will ease your tension. Take them and things will seem okay because that's what being a teenager is all about.